Welcome back to Railcraft with Elfcorp and NOS. Today we're going to be looking at the actual signals um, and their usage. Alright, first up we've got some signals. Let's make them and then we'll roll them out. For this test we'll knock up a couple of distance, a couple of block signals and a couple of dual head blocks and we'll have a look at all of them. Okie dokie. But basically, you use a block signal to signal a piece of track. That's actually what's representing what's on the piece of track. Um, and a distance signal is just a repeater of that. So the block signals are the really important ones. The distance are just um, copies. They're just being transmitted to by them. So I'll make up some block signal. Okay, so what do we need for them? Iron, ink, control circuits. So we'll make a few control circuits up. Yeah, I've cheated and used the um, overlay thing they've got. That's an easier way of doing it. Okay, receiver. You just used all oh. of them. Yeah. You do this did. every time. This is the problem with you using a project table is you spam the shit out of everything. Alright, so we need some iron, some ink, and some signal lamps. We'll make up some signal lamps. Okay, so you got iron, you've got ink. So how do we make signal lamps? So which ones are we making? We're making the block signals? Yeah, we'll make all of them. Okay. Okie dokie, so it's got your red, green, and yellow. So it's a traffic light built into it, that's cool. What have I done wrong there? Uh, let me count the ways. Alright, signal lamp, sweet. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> okay, because the block signal is something that uh, issues states of signals, like it's telling that something's happening, it's a controller. Yep, it's a controller, so it's not receiving any signal from elsewhere or anything. Okay. So I'll make two of them. Yep. Now we'll make the opposite of that, the distant, which is the same recipe but with a receiver signal, because all that's doing is repeating what a block signal says. Okay, yep. So you would use that on approach. You say, the next, this is like saying the next signal is going to be something. Okay. It's like a so warning, it's I guess. Yeah, just trying to, trying to alert you. Yeah. Now the other one we'll make is a dual head block signal. Now, this is just a combination of both. So, effectively you've got two lights on here. And what happens is it's saying the next block of track is set to this and then the one after that is set to something else. So that's what the two heads are. One is the next section, the one is the section after that again. That seems highly unnecessary. It's very necessary when you've got consecutive sets of track. Okay. Because you want a warning at the beginning of the section before, so what you'll have is a green and a yellow, which means you're green through this section, the next one's yellow, and then it could be yellow and red, so it gives you time to stop, because you've got to remember that trains don't stop quickly, NOS. Alright, we've made the three signals, now we've got to make the surveyor tool, which links links them together to say this is the piece of track that these signals apply to. Okie dokie. Is that the one that we made in the last video? Nope, that was a signal tuner that links them. Signal block surveyor tells you that this is a block of track. Okay. This is about the point where my brain starts to melt, so... It makes sense, man. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it does to somebody. Signal block surveyor. Okay, so you did actually need the compasses. Yes. You just didn't need 11 of them. Yes. Lay some track, hippie. Give me some track and I'll lay it. Lay it good. Chest. Okay, what kind of track do we want? Uh, doesn't matter. So, do we need boosters? Do we need... Uh, for now, we'll just lay a straight piece of track, Nos. Just one straight piece of track, I can... Look at that, laid good. Okie dokie, so we put the track down. What next? Alright. So now we lay some signals down. I'll put down some block signals first, the simplest. So we'll go, buzz, simple, signal there. So we're just trying to send a signal. Yep. At the moment, they're just flashing red, right? That's correct. That means they're unlinked. So what we need to do, we need to tell them that this piece of track is what we want it to apply to. Now how this works is, wherever you've got them, it looks, they can be up to four blocks up and it can be up to be, they can be up to two blocks horizontally away, so you can have them mounted up over the track, and they'll okay. 
they'll use the north south west rule and all that shit to pick up which bit of track it is. Yep. So I hit this one once with the signal block survey and it says beginning signal block survey. Okay. I hit the other one and it says successfully divine signal block. Now, hopefully at some say at some point they'll update and be like There we go, they're green. green. Yep. Now if you want to grab a minecart and chuck it in there, I'll see what happens. I'll place it. Ah. And that okay. now goes red. So it's now red. Okay, so the, cool. they're just detecting that in that section of track there is a cart right now. That's right. Okay. Okay, so what are we doing next? So now I'll show you the distance signal. Okay, so the distance signal just repeats what these things are saying. So what I'll do, I'll put it up on top of this other one. That'll be flashing at the moment. I'll put down okay. a receiver and a controller block. Yep. As we discussed so they, in the last video. In the last video. Alright, so what I want to do, I want to link one of these block signals to a receiver. Uh, whichever one's the receiver, I can't remember. You're the one who placed them down, not me. There we go. Okay. So I paired that block signal with this receiver. So with that receiver, they should yep. turn green. Uh, the other one's still flashing red. Probably because it needs to be paired with something. So you you need the the other one. All right. So now the, the distance signal will go the same as the block signal. As the block signal. Okay. So and how far away can the distance signal be? As far as you like. As far as I've seen, I haven't found a limit yet. I suspect if it's loaded, it should work. Okay. So there you go. So you've got that's the controlling block signal that's transmitting to this distant. So what we'll do now is we'll make a dual head block, which is the same thing, it's just a combination. So I'll chuck it up here. For this one to be practical, you've got to have two signal blocks in a row. Okay. So this has got a block signal and a distance signal in it. So that's saying that the block you're in now is safe. Yep. And what we'll do is we'll make another block for the next area. So it's a practical way to do it. That should be up here. The jewel head. Okay. Because there's no point telling you that you shouldn't be in your section you're in after you're already in it. <laughs> okay, I get what you mean, yeah. So we've got two signalling blocks here, Nos. We've got one that goes from this dual head block signal to this block signal, and the next signal block yep. goes from this one to this one. So that's two okay. signalling areas. Yep. So I'll link this one to this one, and then this one to this one. So we've got two signalling blocks. What we then want to do is we want this dual head here to preview what's coming up in the next one. Yep, okay. So is that the bottom light that's previewing the next section instead yeah. of its current section? The one that's still flashing because it hasn't been linked yep. to anything. That's a distant signal at the bottom. So okay. we'll grab a controller signal and link it to that one. And then we'll also link the block signal from the next one up to Still flashing red. The receiver. Yep, give it a sec, it's just linked up now. There we go. Okay, so it's linked up. Cool. So what that's saying is my next section is clear and the one after it is clear. So if you want to chuck that tank cart down, Nos. You've got it. If I want to chuck this tank down, down Nos. <laughs> So when it's in one sector it's red, then when it goes to the next one, 
it's green. Now you can do all kinds of stuff. You use a bit of redstone logic. You can, you know, get different signals because you can force these signals, as we saw in the last one, you can force these signals through these. So yep. you could actually say that if it's in either of these, both of them are red. All right? Okay. Now then you combine that logic with the signal um, receivers and controllers to switch points and switch carts away. So if you've got a red, if you've got two tracks here, you can say if there's a cart in this one, change the points and go to another one. So you you won't have your carts hitting each other on the track. That's the idea. That's the whole point of signalling. It's to protect the carts as they're moving around. The end result here is you have a, a bi-directional track. That's what it's all about. It's having instead of having two tracks going back and forth, you have a track that stuff can go both directions with passing loops. All right, so that's a pretty basic setup. That when the signal is red, because I've got this to emit redstone on aspect red. So when it's red, it changes the points, which means it routes things out of the section. Ideally, you'd have it changing the points in a before you get there, but you get the idea. Okay, so it switches over to be able to divert a cart. Exactly. Okay. Right here. So what I've got here is a bit of a demonstration that I set up a long time ago when I was testing out how all these signals worked. I've got a passing loop straight bit of track, another passing loop, and another straight bit of track. And you can imagine these were say two stations. Now, the whole basis behind this is that each of these pieces of track has their own signal block. I realise this is a bit more boggling to look at at first, but there's block signals for this one, this one, and the straight pieces. So that when a, when a cart comes up on either of these two loops, it goes, okay, is the track ahead clear? And if so, I'll be released and keep going. If not, it'll be held. In this case, you can see the signal's clear. So if we let it go, off will run. As it goes through, you can see the signal block goes yellow or red for that area. If we have a look here, it's probably a better representation. You can see it goes red when it goes through it. Now what we can do here is pretend that this car is one that's going the opposite direction. Now, he'll go around it. And once he's clear, that one will be released, and he'll go the other way. If I remove this one... Whoop, did it too late. But if I remove this one, when he comes back through here, it'll see that that block's clear. It'll change the points, and keep coming back the other way. Put him back and you'll go around it. And that's how you actually implement protective signalling on a single line. But yeah, thanks for watching. Click like if you liked it, and I'll see you later. Bye.